All right, so we had the Oscars last night. Marvel's last Disney decided to move Avengers Infinity War up one week. And we also have Black Panther box office results for week three. How did everything turn out? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's good, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Just My Pen. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into everything, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. I've just reached 2,000 subscribers, so thank you very much. Help me reach 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Also, click the little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. And since I'm asking you to subscribe, if this is your first time finding a video of mine, uh, I do movie reviews, I do film reviews, I also do spoiler reviews, and I also do trailer reactions. And every once in a while, I will just pop on camera to give my opinion on whatever I think is cool, whether it's some news, like Black Panther's box office, how well that's doing, the Avengers Infinity War date being pushed up, the Oscars last night, which I'll touch on just for like a millisecond, and anything else, whether it's like my top 10 this, top 10 that, whatever. I just talk about things that I think is cool. And so the the first thing that we're going to talk about today is last night, the Oscars for uh, 2018 Oscars for the movie year of 2017. Um, I still have not seen every film that was nominated for like Best Picture, like Phantom Thread and Call Me By Your Name, but I still uh, do plan on seeing it. Those, you know, some people's like, Bree, I saw your video last uh, year at the end of last year for your top 10 best movies of 2017. And I had a top 10 best and top 10 favorite. That is a difference. Why wasn't Call Me By Your Name, um, I, I believe that's the name of the movie, on your list? I, I, was, I didn't see the movie, so I can't rate on the film or judge it or compare it to others if I haven't seen it. But I, I have seen majority of the films uh, that were talked about last night. I'm very happy Kobe Bryant got him an Oscar uh, for the animated short. I forgot the name of it, but I didn't even know. I just saw him up on the stage. I was like, oh, what, what the hell are you doing up there? And then I was like, okay, you know, congratulations, Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't that fan a big fan of you in basketball, but that doesn't mean I don't like you either. But I do like the line where he was like, yeah. And uh, let me turn this down. I may be clipping here a little bit, so I'm sorry about that, guys. But he, he made a line. Where he was like, yeah, some people just feel like that we should just be shutting up and dribbling or whatever. And I was like, oh, how are you talking about that uh, Fox 4 uh, news host that's stupid that made that idiotic comment and, as a, a reference to LeBron James? So congratulations there, sir. I also just want to say congratulations to uh, Jordan Peele, who is the writer and director for Get Out that came out February 2017. He won the Oscar for the best um uh, original screenplay i can't remember if it was original screenplay or adapted screenplay i, I think it was original uh francis mcdormand for her she won the oscar for her leading role in uh three billboards in ebbing missouri that was well deserved also gary oldman got his first oscar for um uh gosh what is the name dark darkest hour uh, playing the role of winston churchill well deserved film i mean well deserved award if uh, Daniel Day Lewis would have won for Phantom Thread. I wouldn't have been able to comment because I have not seen that movie. But I do really think think that um, I really do think that Gary Oldman deserves to win that. And then for Best Picture, you had what was it? Um, the Darkest, not The Darkest Hour, The Shape of Water, directed by Guillermo del Toro. And so I really do agree. Well, I don't want to say I'm not upset about that role. I'm not upset about that win right there. Uh, I like the film. It was in my top 10 best of uh, 2017. Um, but if another fan would have won, if three billboards from three billboards from uh, Ebbing, Missouri, if that would have won, I wouldn't have been mad. I wouldn't have been upset. I wouldn't have, um, you know, hollered or cried or anything like that. And, you know, actually, that's all I was going to talk about. Um, but I kind of want to talk about the Oscars a little bit more. But I don't have all the information in front of me. And that's what I'm trying to look at right now. Because uh, we got Best screen Screenplay, Best Leading Actor, Best Leading Actress, uh, and Best... Um, oh, the uh, Best in a Leading Supporting Role for Women was Allison Janney, 
with her role of in Atanya. That was well deserved. She she did a great job there. What was the um? Oh gosh, I should have. I, I I didn't I didn't think I was. I thought I was gonna talk about those little three categories, and that was gonna be it. But I'm having fun right now. So who won? Who won best costumes? I think I, I I can't remember off the top of my head who won best costumes. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm not gonna look on this forever, but best costumes. I think that went to. Oh, it was a. Uh, I was gonna say a flashy movie. Where what? Uh, goodness gracious! I'm so sorry, guys. I can't think of it. And I don't want okay, the shape of water. Um, let's talk about this. Talk about this. The shape of water. Okay, winners are in bold. Best picture. Okay, here we go. I got what I was looking for. All right. Uh, best director went to Guillermo del Toro for the shape of water. Uh, who else? Dunkirk. Le- okay, I'm not mad at that. Probably, yeah, I'm not mad at that. Best actor good to Gary Oldman. Best Actress, okay, got that. Best Supporting Actor, Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards in Ebbing, Missouri. Yes, um, I, I, I I saw this last night. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. That's well-deserved, too. He was up against uh, Will, Willem Dafoe in the Florida Project. I didn't see that. Woody Harrelson, uh, Richard Jenkins, Christopher Plummer. Yeah, only thing that I couldn't or comment on is against Willem Dafoe, Willem Dafoe because I haven't seen the Florida Project. If you don't know who Willem Dafoe is, he first popped on the radar to me in 2002 with the Spider-Man movie by Sony. That was uh, many, many years ago. Best Supporting Actress, like I said, Allison Janney, Itanya, Well Deserved. Best Adapted Screenplay is James Ivory for Call Me By Your Name. I did not see that movie. Best Original Screenplay, like I said, is Get Out, Jordan Peele. Um, Best Cinematography is Roger Deakins from Blade Runner 2049. That movie uh, bored the hell out of me. Bored the hell out of me. I was very um, tired when I saw that movie. Apparently, I don't know. Best Costume Design was Phantom Thread and Mark Bridges. Best Editing. Um, Lee Smith. Now, to me, I'm not mad at that, but I would have gave it to uh, Jonathan Amos and Paul McKillis uh, for Baby Driver. Uh, I would have gave it to that. Best hair and makeup, Darkest Hour. Okay. Uh, I could have given a wonder. I didn't see Victoria and Abdul. Best original score, Shape of Water. Who could that? Uh, okay, I'm not mad at that. Best original song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, best sound editing, Dunkirk, visual effects. Um, visual effects probably could have went to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two or War for the Planet of the Apes. Of course, best animated feature, Coco. That I would have been pissed if they didn't win that. I didn't see no foreign language films. I didn't see no documentaries, shorts. But okay, so. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to run over that. Uh, I enjoyed the show last night. I think Jimmy Kimmel did a great job. And so we'll see who's hosting the next uh, the next Oscars next year. Next, Avengers Infinity War has been moved up a whole week. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's my little happy celebration dance in my chair. Um, it was supposed to be coming out May 4th of 2018, but now that it's coming out May uh, not May, April the 27th of 2018, which is great. That means that it's going to be released around the world all at the same time. Now, people, I, if a long time ago, it was like, I didn't understand why American-made movies would be released in foreign countries earlier than the American release. It didn't, I didn't get that, but it, apparently it has to do with like marketing and, you know, buzz and things like that. Um, you know, if it's doing well over there and everybody's raving about it, that that'll just entice people over the United States. I think that's the answer. If I am incorrect, uh, please let me know down in the comment section below. That is what the comment section is for. Um, to make sure there ain't a no fuzz on my chin. Also, um, you know, they moved it up because they wanted to uh, rid away from spoilers because there are a-holes in the world that will just spoil things for people um, no matter what. Like, um, I will never release, I will never post a uh, spoiler review for a movie that hasn't come out yet because with the live content, live content creators 
in those comment sections and chat forums, people will go and get all the spoilers out the spoiler review and then just go post them in comment sections without or or in live chats and things like that before the movie comes out and they can just ruin it for everybody. You know, so that's just not cool. Now, I don't believe anything else is coming out on April the 27th. Um, if it is, I feel sorry for those movies. Um, some movies that I do feel sorry for. Uh, let me scroll down here real quick. Is Rampage. That comes out on uh, April the 20th, a week before Avengers Infinity War. Super Troopers 2, which I really don't care about myself. And... Uh, yeah, those are on You know, I want Super... I mean, I don't, I don't care if Super Troopers 2 does good or not. I mean, I don't want it to do bad. I just don't care. I mean, I first film, I don't remember. I saw it. I thought it was funny. But Rampage, that does look like a lot of fun. And so I want that to do well. But it's going to be kind of competing against Infinity War here. And uh, too bad for Amy Schumer. I feel pretty. Um, you know what? This is really... This will really... Um, well, it's up against Avengers Infinity War now, so I don't know. But it is a kind of programming. But this I Feel Pretty movie, real quick, um, based on with um, with Amy Schumer, this will really tell me a lot with how popular she really is in the film industry because her film Snatch flopped. Uh, but what was it? Train wreck that came out in 2015. That did fairly well. The reason why I'm bringing up uh, Amy Schumer right now is because she was in a little bit. Well, excuse me, a little bit of the conversation with the whole Monique, the whole Monique boycott Netflix deal. I had a video about that, but I deleted it because I did not hit on a lot of points that I wanted to, and I felt that some people could twist my words, and I did not want that video to come out and bite me in the butt later on. Now. I'll just go ahead and say this is the wage and gender. Is there a wage disparity between men and women in Hollywood? Yes. Is there a wage disparity between um, um, white people and black people in Hollywood? Hell yes. Is there a wage disparity between black women and everybody else in Hollywood? Hell mega hell yes. And it's bull crap and it needs to stop and it needs to be um, addressed. So that is a serious issue. Um, is the 500k that Monique was offered is that a low amount? Yes, it is. Should Monique get the same amount of money as Amy Schumer at 13 million dollars? Since she said, I want to get what the legends are getting, I don't know how that makes sense numerically. If you look at all platforms of entertainment, uh, Amy Schumer is here and Monique is down here. I'm not speaking about talent because talent is that is, um, that is irrelevant. That is a subjective opinion, whether you think they're talented or not. The objective opinion is whether they can get people to show up at theaters, book sales, sold out shows, subscriptions on Netflix. And if you just look at past numbers, Amy Schumer, no matter how long they've been in the business, Amy Schumer is far ahead of Monique as far as numbers are concerned. So I don't I don't. So that that's that. I may make another video about that later. But uh, anyway, uh, Avengers got moved up. I'm very happy about that. Um, it also gives what you call it some a uh, breathing room, and we also get uh, we got uh, we are we we have six more release dates for the Avengers. So we already had May the first of 2020, um, J July the 31st of two, uh, 2020, uh, November the sixth of 2020. But they just released May 7 21, 7 30 21, 11 5 21. 2 18 22 5 6 22 and 7 29 22 now i'm not finna go through here and try to guess what all those will be i will try to guess on some of them okay so of course right now we got um event we just had black Panther come out february we got avengers defending war april 27th of this year and then the first uh weekend of july july the 6th we have ant-man and the wasp next march we have captain marvel uh next march uh may we have avengers 4 and july 19th july 5th 19 after that we have uh spider-man homecoming 2 uh which is going to be change something else okay the next movie after that is going to be may the 1st of 2020 i am very confident in feeling that that is going to be guardians of the galaxy 3 why well we got guardians of the galaxy volume 2 
on May of 2017. So this will exactly be three years later. Um, there was a there was just about a three year gap. It was really like two years and you know eight months, but we're just gonna say three years between August for August 2014 for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. Three years later, we get you know this is exactly three years. So I'm very confident that we're going to get um, you know. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Going into the Galaxy Volume Three on uh, next oh, May of 2020, July 30 31st uh, of 2020. I believe that it's going to be the Black Widow movie um, that has already been confirmed uh, by Chris Evans. But he could have just been talking. He doesn't necessarily make the decisions, but I don't think he would just release that information just for the hell of it. So I think that's going to be that time. Um, also, um, people have been clamoring for a Black Widow movie for the longest. And then uh, November of 2016, I think November 6th of 2020, I believe that is going to be Doctor Strange 2. Uh, we forgot the first Doctor Strange in November of 2016. Uh, so this will be a four year gap. Um, but at the same time, um, we do need another Doctor Strange. Maybe his villain will be Nightmare. OK, so the, I also uh, first 2020 Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Black Widow and then Doctor Strange 2. May, uh, May 20, May 7th of 2021. I think that may go to Black Panther 2. Now, there is a date for February 18th of 2022, Black History Month. It could be Black Panther, but that will be four years. I don't think they want to wait four years for Black Panther 2. Uh, with the success of Black Panther, the box office, which I'm going to talk about in a second, it may go there. And then after that, I don't know, guys. We're just going to have to wait and see. Maybe another Spider-Man movie. Um, who knows? I don't think they're going to make us wait three years for Spider-Man. He's too big of a character and has too big of a rogues gallery. But anyway, enough of the Oscars, enough of Avengers and uh, and release dates. I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing. We now have uh, we're going to talk about Black Panther and the success that it's making at this freaking box office. So yesterday, the act, the estimated numbers was coming in. The Black Panther was going to make. What was it? Uh, 65 million. And it is actually the official numbers have come in at 66 million dollars, 66 million, three hundred and six thousand nine hundred and thirty five dollars. Yes, yes, yes. It only dropped another 40 percent. And that is great, guys. Um, and, and any of the drops, it has not dropped more than uh, 50 percent in either of uh, the weeks. And this is by Brad Breverett at box office module it was yet another monster weekend for disney's marvel's black panther as the superhero feature became the third fastest film to ever reach 500 million domestically and it is 500 million domestic the only other mcu film that do has done that is marvel's the avengers in 2012 at 623 the weekend's new raw release came in just a bit short of mojo's pre-weekend forecast red sparrow came as the runner up uh i don't care about red sparrow um, with an estimated 65.7 Disney and Marvel Studios Black Panther top of the weekend um, straight become the third well I can't read box office for the third straight weekend becoming only the third film in the MCU to accomplish that feat over the first three weeks the others being Captain America the Winter Soldier and the Avengers as noted above the film top 500 million domestic becoming the third blah 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 Black Panther's I don't know I can Okay, I'm not going to read his stuff word for word. I can analyze this myself. Uh, but Black Panther came in at number one. Red Sparrow, number two. Death Wish, number three. I have reviews for Red Sparrow and Death Wish up on my channel if you want to go check it out. Also for Game Night and Peter Rabbit. Um, Black Panther. So let me go here real quick to my rundown, my, my showdown, my opening weekend showdown. Okay. So right now. Uh, let's go to the weekend. So Black Panther, the first weekend came in at 202, second weekend 111, and third weekend 66. It is beating every other, it is beating every other, um, like, okay. So this showdown, I didn't explain that because you can't see what I'm doing. This is an opening weekend showdown against some of the best opening weekends of all time. Star Wars The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, The Avengers 2012, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and Black Panther. Um... 
Black Panther, which I've talked about in past weeks, has the fifth best op- three day opening weekend of, of all time. Um, and it didn't, you know, it didn't win the first opening weekend, but that's OK. But the second weekend, it, it beat every other of those num- films I just released, except for The Force Awakens um, and week two and week three. Because week three, Black Panther has 66 million. Star Wars The Last Jedi has 52 million. The Avengers has 55 million. And Jurassic World has 54 million. The reason why I do these showdowns is because I like to try to assess where the film will end up. Now, if you look at um, the day to day, uh, Black Panther Sunday, Black Panther got 19 million above everybody else. The next highest was 17 million, which was Jurassic World. Um, this past Saturday, it beat every other movie at 30 million. The highest was 23 million, which was the Avengers. And on Friday, it did not beat everybody else. Um, it beat the Jurassic World and the Avengers at 14 and 15 million. Black Panther got 16 million this past Friday, but The Last Jedi got 19 million. Now, um, right now, domestically, Black Panther is at $501 million. Uh, at this point in time, uh, Jurassic World was at five hundred million, so it's only one million dollars ahead. And again, the reason why I am where is the cursor? The reason why I am making these uh, this going this day by day thing is because I just want to see if it's on track to make the same amount. Because um, Jurassic World made six hundred and fifty two million, and so right now Black Panther is on pace of beating that. So it could beat the six hundred and fifty million. It could go up to seven hundred million, which is freaking fantastic. So that's just really great to uh, that's just something to really be excited about there. I'm very, very excited about it. Now, um, there are some major markets that Black Panther has not opened up in yet. It opened up in Japan uh, this past weekend on Friday. I believe it will open up uh, in on China and uh next weekend or whatever and this you know of course it's going to be slow at the beginning it's not going you're not going to get the whole china box office chinese box office and uh and one weekend um but if i go to the foreign yeah the only numbers we have we don't have for black panther yet are china uh japan and russia and japan i'm not counting on that to make a lot of money I will be disappointed if Black Panther does not get at least 150 million from China. Not saying that it's supposed to. That's just what I want. Um, usually, um, films average out, average out around that amount uh, for China. So if I go to all the previous Marvel Cinematic Universe films, let's go. So let's say Marvel's The Avengers. Okay, let's see what Marvel's The Avengers made in China. Oh, it only made 86 million. So, you know, even though China is the biggest, it's not the end all be all. But let's see what. Uh, let's see what our Age of Ultron made in China. Oh, shit. Excuse me. I'm sorry. 240 million. So that's a big jump. And, you know, just some, you know, that's that's potential. If it made that much in China, Black Panther, that's man, that's. That's a that's a great Iron Man three. Let's see what that made in China real quick. And Iron Man three, you can compare to Black Panther a lot because both of the budgets was two hundred million. China the budget uh, it made one hundred twenty one million. Let's see what it made in Russia real quick. Why? Wow, okay, Japan it made twenty five. This is Iron Man three. What did it make in Russia? Forty four million. So those are nice little chunks of change there. You know, you add everything up. Uh, I like to see Captain America Civil uh Captain America movie. I like to see how they perform overseas because it the and then the the title name is Captain America, so it's representing America. So other countries that you know don't really care about America, you know, but in China it made 180 million, uh, and Russia it made 16 million, so that's a lot less in Japan than the last time it made 24 million. So I think I'm not going to go through every MCU movie and what it made in all those countries, but I think it was, was it age of all trying to make 240 million. I'm not expecting it to do that. I would like for it. I would be disappointed if it didn't make, oh, excuse me, at least $100 million in China, but I would like it to make, I mean, I want it to make, if it can make 500 million, great. It won't, but, uh, well, I won't say that. 
Uh, let's knock on some wood here. But uh, I would like it, like for it to make at least one hundred and fifty million dollars. And so let, let me just see. Uh, Black Panther's doing amazing right now worldwide. Is it over nine hundred million yet? I ain't even look at that. Oh man, that's right there. Eight hundred and ninety nine million dollars. Eight hundred ninety nine. It's literally right there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh man. Let me uh let me pull out let me pull out the the uh calculator. That's when I get the exact figure. Okay, nine hundred million. Let's do this. We having fun. Y'all can be y'all can have fun with me and geek out and play with numbers and stuff. It is only fifty eight thousand dollars, fifty eight thousand seventy nine dollars from nine hundred million. Which is amazing, amazing. Um, of course, it will reach a billion dollars by next weekend. Um, I am very confident by it. So by this time next week, it will make. Hey, where the hell is the cursor? I can't. Oh Lord. Okay, there we go. By this time next week, uh, it will make a uh, billion dollars. And one just reason I know that is because let me go to my open the weekend showdown. I'm gonna do the week the weekly box office. So if things stay consistent, it will make another eighty one million dollars domestically. Because the third, not weekend, the third week, um, Jurassic World made 81 million, Avengers made 74, Star Wars Last Jedi made 84. So I'm, I'm assuming this past weekend it made 143 million. The week, not weekend, the week. Uh, so I'm assuming that Black Panther will make at least 80 million if I'm just going to lowball at 75, but that's not including the foreign, all the, not just one foreign country, all the foreign countries. So this time next week, Avengers will be at the $1 billion mark. It is, that is pretty much guarantee. And you will see me dancing and celebrating things like that. And, uh, I'm just right at 30, I'm right on the 30 minutes. So I'm going to cut this video short guys. Cause, uh, I don't have nothing else to talk about, but guys, that is just my opinion, my thoughts, my reaction, my reviews on, you know, a little bit of the Oscars, you know, Avengers Infinity War being pulled up and then the Black Panther success uh, rate so far. Uh, I'm so happy about Black Panther. I'm so happy about Marvel. I'm so happy about all this other stuff. They could have left out the CIA, CIA destroying an American revolution in Black Panther, but I may make another separate video because there are so many different opinions of this movie. Um... A new opinion is coming out. People are talking about Killmonger. They're just crazy to me. And I'm going to have to address that because it keeps coming up. But the, the film is uh, the film is loved um, universally for the most part. But guys, that is just my opinion. What did you think about this video? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, it's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go to my website. Check me out there. Bookmark it. And also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review or video opinion, whatever of the Oscars, uh, Marvel, and the Black Panther box office. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.